This is a walkthrough of what's included with Ming Mei, a rigged woman character for Blender and VTubing. These are the two zip files that come with your purchase. There's a Ming Mei Blender zip that has all the files you need if you want to use Blender, plus it has a few extras. The Ming Mei VRM Unity zip has the VRM files for VTubing. It also has all the files used to create the VRMs in Unity. So if you want to make your own or customize your VRM, you would use these files. This is what's inside the Ming Mei Blender zip file. So you see here, there's an FAQ with tips on your purchase, how to use it. There is a Ming Mei Blender folder that has two Blender files, one with a GUI picker and one without a picker. The GUI picker is a nice graphical user interface to pick the bones. It's a little bit easier to use. So grab the one you want. There is an AutoRig Pro plugins folder. This has the free versions of AutoRig Pro. So this allows you to use all the features of the rig. It should work for the most part without it, but a few of the features requires those. So be sure you install those. There is a folder with all the textures used to create Ming Mei. These are a backup in case you need them. There's also a Cats Blender plugin. This is a plugin used to prepare the rig for making a VRM. So you have that if you need it. This is what's inside the Ming Mei VRM Unity zip file. So if you open this folder here and open this folder here, there are two VRM files, one that has Ming Mei with a dress and one where she's wearing a workout outfit. Over here, we have the main Unity package. So if you open this, you'll have everything you need to customize Ming Mei's expressions or visims, or you can change her outfits or change the colors. Then here we have the two files I used to create this Unity package. And here we have a plugin for Unity to export from Unity to a VRM. You won't need this because it's already inside this package, but you have it in case you need it. And here again is the Cats Blender plugin used to prepare and export a file from Blender to make a VRM. And lastly, we have a folder with all the same backup textures. This is what you see when you open the file. So we have Ming Mei here in the 3D viewport with a full rig, and we have Ming Mei with a GUI picker over here so you can more easily pick parts of the rig. And in the outliner here, you can see this is the main folder or collection, but here we have a collection with different outfits. So if you click these checkboxes, you can easily change her outfit. These are the bone layers. This one here in the top left is the main bone layer for the primary movements. This one here is a secondary bone layer. This is used for doing things like bending the limbs. These two here are the detailed controls for the hair. And this layer here is what you would use if you're weight painting. On the back here, this green sphere is the main controls for the hair. So if you grab that, hit G and move it, you can move all the hair at once. If you want more granular control of the hair, you can click either this bone layer or this bone layer. And all these different shapes are the different strands of the hair. So you can grab some bones and hit G and you can move parts of the hair. Most of the parts of this character have a subdivision modifier. So this makes it um, very smooth. So it'll render nicely and it'll also display it real time nicely, but for the real-time display, it slows things down. So you can turn that off by unchecking this. So now the mesh looks boxier and uglier, but it'll make your job easier if you're doing some, if you're setting up animations. And as long as this is turned on, when you render it, it'll still look nice and smooth. For your GUI picker, try and use the scroll wheel or hold shift and drag to move things around. If you just drag with the middle mouse button, this happens and you can't figure out where things are, what's going on. You can get that view back by hitting the N key. And if you don't see cam UI here, click it like that and select cam UI. And then hit the zero on the numpad or you can go to view cameras, active camera, and it brings it back like that. The rig has a lot of nice features. So if you go to pose mode, hit N and 
let's say grab the hand here. So right now it's in IK mode. So if you grab this and hit G, the whole arm just moves wherever you drag the hand. If you click here, you can snap it to the FK mode. And now when you move the hand, the arm does not move. To move the arm, you need to grab parts of the arm and hit R to rotate. So there are different ways of moving. It also has things such as if you grab the hand here, you can adjust the finger grasp like that and her fist is closed or you can put it back like that. It also has things like elbow pinning so you can type in one here. So say if her hand, if her arms were on a table, if you do this, now her elbow stays where it is no matter where you move the hand. So there's there's some nice features um, in this rig. So just click on different bones and you can see like different bones have different options. The GUI picker and the pose library are fun to work with together. So let's say we want to make her smile and close her eyes. So let's zoom in here, make sure these two layers are turned on and make sure pose position is turned on, not to rest. Then let's grab her eyes over here, get all these bones around the eyes. Then let's go to the pose library and see what we've got. Let's do eyes closed. Then let's grab the bones around her mouth. So we'll shift drag that and we'll go say mouth smile big. And now she's smiling. So this pose library has a lot of positions for the eyebrows, the eyes, the mouth, and it has a bunch of um, facial expressions too. So here goes a F shape. So she's saying F like Frank. All of these poses and expressions are also saved as shape keys. So if you click the mesh instead of the rig, you'll see a shape keys section. And so it has all of the same poses. So if you click one of them, say mouth open and turn this on, you'll see the mouth opens. However, the teeth did not open. So you'll have to also click the mouth, which has all of the face details and do the same thing. Turn this one on and then the mouth is open. So there's two ways to set these poses. The reason why you would use these shape keys instead of the pose library is if you're exporting to another program. And if you are going to do that, make sure you grab the eyes, grab the body and hit control J to join it. And then you're good to go to export this and you have all your shape keys all set up. Let's go through how to add some clothing to your rig. So here is a new shirt. You can see there's no armature modifier on here. So click your shirt, shift click your rig and control P and do armature deform with empty groups. Okay, so once you get that, then click your body, shift click your clothing, go to object mode and then go to weight paint mode, then go to weight and transfer weights, then go to instead of all layers, make sure the source layer is set to by name. And then that should be it. And wait, go back to object mode. And after you've attached the clothing, you can see that there is a armature modifier here. And if you test it, you can go to pose mode, hit G and you can see that the sweatshirt moves as uh, you would expect it to. I do want to note that you should check the details because if you did the, if you attached it backwards, it might look like it still works, but all these face details will, will be messed up. So just go after you've attached it, make sure the face still works as you expect it to. And it looks like that is working okay. I did want to show you one little detail here. So now that we've added the weights, it has copied all of these vertex groups from the body onto the um, sweatshirt, the new clothing. And sometimes the hair vertex groups from the hair bones 
messes things up. So we need to go and delete that. I do want to caution you that you don't want to delete things that say spine like that. You want to keep those. You want to delete anything that says spline, spline with an L. So let's go through here. Spine, that's okay. Spine, that's okay. So we don't want to delete any spines. You want to delete splines. Let's go through here. It should be one chunk all together. Okay. So see if these are all splines. Let's go to the very bottom one. Then hit this minus and it'll delete the current spline and anything above it. Okay, so that should be it. Let's go through here and see if there's anything else. And there's not, so we are good to go. This sweatshirt should be ready. You can always fine tune the weight paintings manually, but um, this should be good to go. And if you did want to modify the weight paints, you would grab your armature, click this bone group here, bone layer there, then shift click your rig, go to object and weight paint. And then you could click on these individual bones and adjust them manually. But we should be okay. Like this, like this is not great. You might want to blend it out. Most of the things on Ningme are color adjustable. So if you go to the shading workspace, click the dress, you will see there's a group called colors and a factor here. So the way the colors work is that color two is set to black, color one is set to whatever color you choose. So right now, if you drag this over, you can see we can have a pink color or we can grab this blue one here and drag it to color one. And now it's blue. And then you can adjust this to make it like a darker blue. Skin is also adjustable. So you can, the color of the skin is not adjustable, but the makeup is. But instead of going to black, it goes to no makeup. So we can zoom this in here. So if we drag this over, she's got no makeup. We drag it back. She has um, darker makeup. And these are just different layouts of makeup. So this one goes to like dark overall makeup. Um, hair, same thing, adjustable. Adjust the factor or change the texture map. So most of the things on Ming Mei are adjustable. The hair, the face, the I'm sorry, the hair, the skin, the eye color, and all the clothing have a few options for colors. This is what you'll see when you import your Unity asset. You can do that by going to Asset, Import, Package, Custom Package. Then you navigate to where the Mingmei 57 Make VRM Unity packages. And just import that. I'm not going to do it now. And then you'll see this. If you want to change the clothes, you can say, let's pick uh, shorts. We'll pick shorts A and highlight that and then turn it on here. And you'll see now this is a light color blue. And then do tank A, turn that on. And then we can turn off the dress. And then let's turn off our nice shoes. So I think they're called the flats. And then turn on her tennis shoes. So that's how you can change her um, outfit. You can also change the colors for the outfit. So you can click, sometimes you have to click twice, but click the object you want to change. Then go to the material. Um, these VRMs are set up to be um, a cartoony style. So, so there's actually two textures for the color, the albedo. So click one and um, you have to look at these names really closely to see which one's for the tank top. Um, so I'm just going to pick this one here. That changes the one color for it. And then you have to change the other one like that. And that's how you change the colors. If you want to change her expressions, click the rig and then go down to blend shapes right here, VRM blend shape proxy, double click this, and you'll see these are all the express, the uh, blend shape clips I have set up. So there's A, uh, E, U, there's blink and fun and blink left, and I'm not sure what this one is here. There's sad. 
So you can change what these look like. So you click the one you want, say uh, sorrow, open up body, and maybe the sad should be like, maybe we want our sad to be like kind of a sneering sad. Maybe that's sad. Or you can make a new one. Let's call this um, surprise. So click that one. And then you can choose whatever you want for surprise. Let's say uh, browse up, like whoa, and mouth open. Let's see here, mouth parted, closed. Mouth, there should be a mouth open somewhere. Mouth open wide, like whoa. So get these set up however you want to. And then when you're ready to export your own VRM, click the rig here, go to VRM. Uni VRM and export humanoid and save that as whatever you want. And then you have your custom VRM for VTubing. This concludes our walkthrough. I hope that helps you get started using Ming Mei's rig.